Being a woman is the low. Oh. A lot of times the straight people that we go up to are boring. I got a message to all the agents in Los Angeles. You guys need to get off your fucking high horse. How much would I have to pay you to kiss me? You can get this for free, brother. Prove it. <laughs> that was the most <laughs> awkward thing ever. It's -a me, Mario. What is up, my friends? Welcome back to Uncensored with Mario Adrian, my podcast. <laughs> Where the balls come from, the truth. That's the one. That's the <laughs> one. <laughs> and guys, today's special episode because we have a boys episode Woo! with my two favorite people in the world, my mom and my dad. <laughs> no, we have uh, Jeff Caster here. Uh, if you guys don't know him, he's a retired hand model and cowboy from Tennessee, 59 years old, soon to be sure. 60. Yeah. yeah so very congrats, congrats. congrats. And you. we have Riley Hersey, a um, crop top wearing e-boy from Seattle. How cool is that? Whose birthday was yesterday. His birthday was yesterday, yes. I just want to catch up with you, you know, in life. I want to see what's up with you. We have some controversial Chill topics up. we can discuss. Yeah. Right? That's what we love. And uh, first I want to ask you, Jeff, how's your relationship going right now? Well, not great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's getting better, you know? When I travel out of town, she likes to block me. Okay. So you have a girlfriend to the state. Is it your girlfriend or no? I don't think I would say girlfriend. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, because what, every time I go out of town, she blocks me, so this mm -hmm. is more... <laughs> is there a reason why she blocks you when you go out of town? You know, I'm not responsible for other people's actions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think she's got something internal going on. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I told her I wasn't smashing out, and I wasn't. Okay. And she should be good with that, you know? So she there's like jealousy issues maybe a little bit? Yeah. You know, you know people's mind, they think the worst, right? Yeah, for sure. They look at me just as fucking kingpin running around everywhere she thinks i'm just getting nasty everywhere yeah partially true okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but not yeah. fully true you know if i tell someone i'm not gonna i'm gonna be exclusive i'm gonna be exclusive good kind of how you and i were that's how we were and then things yeah. changed and went downhill from there and we just started like yeah every street corner was like you know and now you have a girlfriend now i, I now i have a girlfriend now i have a You're girlfriend. rock bottom i'm rock, <laughs> rock bottom <laughs> <laughs> well, you you asked me on your channel like if if I want to have a thruple with you. Yeah, he's like, yeah, Forgot about that word. Yeah, thruple. yeah, yeah, thruple, yeah. right? You didn't bring it up once in the, in, in your Fuck. video. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think it's like sustained? Like, if you have a thruple relationship, I I don't think you would be a thruple part. If yeah. anything, you'd be a side chick. You know, you'd be like a side <laughs> chick. We're like the the main players, and then you come in like a sub, sometimes like a side chick kind of deal. Yeah, I guess a side chick is better than nothing. But yeah. honestly, I think anything outside of the norm is questionable. Not because it can't happen. I mean, we're still, this is he's as far outside of the norm as could be. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's a reason that things are called the norm. I think that's because that's how it's been throughout history. Now you've got young kids mm -hmm. that come into town. You know, they're fresh. They're fresh from their mama's vagina and they think they know how the history works and the world mm. works. But I'm here to say, I don't know if they do. Well, but so Riley, you're like the relationship <laughs> expert here. Um, do you think a throupled relationship can be successful where there's like equal love between all oh, three sure. partners? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, th I see so many challenges with that. If I put Oh, I mean, there's also a lot of challenges. I'm saying in theory, can it? For sure, it can. I'm not saying it will for sure work I'm just for thinking everybody. Like, it takes so much to like love, because each person almost has to love each person equally. It's yep. like, it takes a lot of like variables, right? So I'm it like, you know, variables. between you guys, right? You have like, I have like my favorite friend, my second favorite friend. I like one of you guys way more than the other one. I won't tell which is which. But like, if we were in a throuple, let's put it that way. Yeah. I might, yeah, Riley might love both of us unconditionally. You True. might just be in a throuple because you want to fuck me, but you don't even care about Riley. So it cre creates this weird dynamic where actually you're just after me. And then Riley feels left out because he doesn't get the love from you. And I don't want anything to do with all y'all, but I just love the recognition and admiration I get from you. That's why I'm in a relationship with you guys. So I think it just like creates this very complicated dynamic where you all kind of have to be on the same page, which is hard. 
Yeah, I mean, any polydynamic has a lot of communication that needs to happen. Um, yeah. More so, generally speaking, than most monogamous relationships, because in a monogamous relationship, a lot of the boundaries are already pretty pre-established by society. Like, yeah. you already kind of go into a monogamous relationship knowing like what you can and can't mm. do with other people, yeah. right? It's more common. So you have versus like poly relationships, you kind of have to have a conversation about everything. Are you mm. cool with me kissing somebody without telling you? Should yeah. I talk to you beforehand? Afterwards? Do you want to hear about it at all? Do you want like your own time? um with me afterwards after it happened yeah, the next day yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same day you know what i mean like you literally have to facetime you right when it happens like that I, kind of I mean, thing. yeah you yeah. literally have to like communicate all of these things in advance. what's it like in your relationship say you meet some girl or guy or whatever right and mm -hmm. you just like decide to like do the lord's work and procreate with that person how do you communicate that to your partner do you say hey i'm i'm about to do this are you okay with it do you tell them after do you FaceTime them while it's happening? What's yeah. yeah, so Ricky and I in particular, we've um, pre-communicated everything. Mm -hmm. So we already have like most of our boundaries pretty well set before any circumstance could even like come up okay. that involves it just so we know sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we always say like things could change in the moment. Like sometimes yeah. if... You don't know. Yeah, you don't, you don't know. know how you're going to feel exactly. So No, and so, some, some things are unpredictable. Yeah. Like you walk down Hollywood Boulevard... Behind a dumpster, somebody jumps out, gives you a blowjob. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> it happens all the time. It's pretty normal. It's pretty normal. But what would you in that situation do? Would you be like, hey, hold on. Before you do that, let me call my partner real quick. Or have you established clearly in that scenario what would happen? So we've established that if something comes up in a way that we're just... Comes up. Comes up. That we're just not able to somehow reach out to the other person. That um, it's okay as long as it's proceeded with in like still a, a safe manner ideally you know we ha we're only having sex with people that have been tested beforehand okay, um, okay, that, yeah. or that we just otherwise know are going to be safe or we're having safe sex with the condom or whatever but if that happens we can talk about it afterwards preferred for both of us if we can just even shoot a text yeah. like hey like just met this girl <laughs> I'm like behind a dumpster right now just so you know <laughs> you, yeah usually <laughs> usually we know if we're going you know we're going to be in a scenario where we're at a party yeah, or yeah. where we're something like that usually we know ahead of time if something crazy is going to happen mm -hmm. or we're in an environment where it could happen and For we're sure. already kind of there um but yeah no we have it set up where ideally we can talk about it beforehand say hey this is going to happen and interesting then, and interesting, then that yeah. way we try you, you want to try to do that so that your partner can also like have the um ability to then react in the moment as well because yeah. again sometimes i want to know immediately i'll be like oh yeah tell me about everything like as soon as it happens yeah. and other times i'll be like yo like i've just kind of had like an emotional day already and and like my yeah energy reserves are a little low so just like let me like let's talk about it tomorrow that makes sense thing. so jeff put yourself in the situation right you have a partner you're in the relationship with me right and then i just go out like i said the, the dumpster on Vine Street, bro. Notorious dumpster. Right there. Notorious. <laughs> and it just happens. It just happens. I just happen to get like a Thursday afternoon blowjob on Vine. Would you want me, if, you, if we were dating, would you want me to tell you? Would you rather not know? Like, how would you deal with that? I guess it depends on how long, if we were dating, how long we've been how together. How long the blowjob lasts? Yeah, that too. Okay. <laughs> that too. Quick for Most me, bro. Important. I'm going to tell you I'm efficient 30 seconds. I'm done. Well, yeah. also, like, I wanted to clarify, in a throuple relationship, is it an actual equal relationship? Is This is not like Mormon style where you have multiple wives. In a th The general definition of throuple would be that it's an equal partnership among, among those, all three. Those actually exist, you're saying? They do. They're very difficult because um, it's nigh impossible for it to just organically happen where all three of you just form at the exact same time yeah. so generally there's yeah. two partners who have been together yeah, longer. like me my girlfriend and then jeff comes along you know and tries exactly. to wiggle right. or me, infiltrate or, the system or me and ricky and jeff comes along yeah we bring you into the relationship okay listen jeff between being relationship with me and vida and riley and ricky what, what's your choice you're wow. number one i'm number wow. one not even hesitated did not even hesitate but riley's not far behind and then vida Wow. She didn't come through on that connect. You know what I'm talking about? So she <laughs> <laughs> wow. Paul, I have a question for Riley, though, okay. before we keep going. Do you believe that women inherently want one partner, or do you think that that's bullshit? I don't know that I have a stance on what people inherently want. Um, I do think that, obviously, there's biological 
things coded into our DNA that we tend to, you know, have. But also I think part of what makes humans humans is that we act against our biological urges a lot of times. And that's something that we do that no other animal does. Mm. So, like, I don't know that... uh, inherently is like not a word that I like to prescribe into a relationship anyways. We talked about this yesterday at dinner where it's like, I think every relationship with every human being, whether it's a friendship or a relationship romantically or anything should be completely unique to those two people. And Mm. like, sure. I sometimes think it's nice though to have uh, like an example. Right, and yeah. that's a, that's the a point you're trying to make. Right, with poly relationships, there's not a lot of examples. Mm-hmm. We don't know how these things work. I have a good idea of watching tons of movies how monogamous mm-hmm. straight relationships work. Right, and I think now, which like, is a total own problem that we movies. can talk about. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> there's a lot of problematic. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're right because like, movies have this like. You're right. That's what he brought up. That you said that like when in romantic movies when the guy makes a mistake. He just he always fixes it with a grandiose gesture and it's mm. it's very rarely associated with the actual like you know what I mean? It's like he does something wrong. Generally yeah. speaking, we're talking about in a movie. Yeah, that's here. Like, it's like, Generally the guy yeah. does something wrong, the girl reacts, they break up or whatever it is, and then rather than like sitting down and having like a healthy, constructive conversation about boundaries, the guy just like rents out Times Square and like gets a bunch of acrobats and they throw rose petals in the air and he's like I love you and she's like oh my god you do love me and And I think that there's like a whole problematic like culture around that yeah in and of itself but I guess it's not as entertaining of a movie if they just sit down and like have a healthy conversation for two hours no but that's I was basing my thing off of I was like all I gotta do is rent Times Square like you said (laughs) you know what I mean yeah I think it works with girls I think sometimes they appreciate those like big gestures maybe can but it's very stereotype, like you know. It's but it's also thing. like, yeah. what came first? Do you, they only appreciate it because mm. of the movies and the society? Well, I would say though that or? every stereotype that's perpetuated in a movie is based in reality somehow, right? Yeah. So there's got to be a truth somewhere, but it definitely perpetuated like an unhealthy way of dealing with conflicts. Maybe, yeah. I think like you know, like the Mormons, they would have you could have multiple wives, right? Yeah, and polygamy. And I could see like that maybe working a little better than actual thruple like an equal love relationship it, it seems really hard well to i believe. think what i could see is like in a thruple that you have a primary partner much like you have and there's many different like ways of doing this i'm assuming yeah we should try guys we should try yeah yeah the primary partner thruples are are difficult because there's a lot of negative stereotypes associated with that like unicorn hunting is what mm-hmm. it's called yeah. where there'll be an existing couple it'll be like ricky and i and we see you across the bar I mean, he's happily a unicorn. I think Jeff would be happily. There are people who are happily unicorns. Yeah. Very fair. But the unicorn hunting is generally like when a couple would try to like basically prey on you wanting to be in a thruple and be like, oh, like you want us or whatever. But like we bring you in, but we keep you at like a lower level than our relationship. It just gets. That's where it gets very like problematic. It's very hurtful for the people who come in as that third. Well, I would also argue that this is like, 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 I'm going to just keep stereotyping the shit out of people, right? I would say that stereotypically in that scenario, it's mainly probably the woman having an issue with that because I'm seeing tons of gay relationships that are just open and they have I, they seem to have less of an issue with that than women and i think there's just like inherently again we have it <laughs> women tend to have more jealousy when it comes to any romantic you know interactions between their partner and a third person well I think it's hard for me to see like how evolution would play out if girls did not inherently want one partner no, because then sense. you're running yeah, yeah. around with different kids. I mean, like the male lion always kills fucking kids. So if the <laughs> woman's just running around to different partners with their kid, yeah. those kids are dead. Yeah, a couple hundred years ago. There, there, there is happened. evolutionary. There's an evolutionary reason for women to be more jealous than men. Because think about it, or even like I mean, I think I said this before. Like, there's I study psychology, and there's like this whole like evolutionary aspect of psychology where they go like, okay, a woman if the boy, if the man cheats on the woman by falling in love with another girl, that man is going to protect that woman. However, if he fucks another girl, he can still protect her. Therefore, women have more of an issue with a man emotionally cheating on them. However, mm-hmm. men, if a woman physically cheats on you with another man, 
she's taken. Like, if she impregnates her, she's gone, bro. You're not going to procreate, Jeffy. Oh, no. So, therefore, men usually have more of an issue with their girl having sex with another man. And it's actually true if you ask most women. Even now, it's so ingrained in us from an evolutionary standpoint that it now, even, it still holds truth. Where I, I mean, what, what about you? Like, if you imagine your girlfriend and she has sex with another dude or she falls <clears throat> in love with another dude, what's worse for you? I, I mean, I would say fall in love with another dude. But I know what you're saying. Once you like... You just completely... That was not good, Jeff. I just made a whole point. And I'm I over, build it up. I mean, and, and I'm over here like... shut it down. <laughs> and I'm over here like, I would love it if she does either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're out of this though. anyways. Like, jealousy does not apply to you, really. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, maybe... I guess it depends on if I loved her and actually wanted to stay with her. No, that's true. That's true. Okay, saying you are in, yeah, it's true. But it does seem, and I'm not saying this is right, but it does seem to be worse if a a girl cheats compared to a guy. It seems like it is, right? Because a guy, you kind of expect it. A girl, you're like, it's a slut. <laughs> you expect it. See, it's another, like, yeah, it's another societal thing that's kind of been built in. Yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's, I'm going to say it right now. Being a woman fucking blows. Oh, like, blows. Like, why, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you ever do that to yourself? <laughs> no, for real, though. It's so unfair. I see yes. it. I see it. You get paid less on average. You have Whoa. to have periods. Well, I'll disagree with the first part, but go ahead. W- women are getting, p- I mean, not on OnlyFans, right? I think OnlyFans are like modeling. Maybe women get paid more. Well, I mean, there's a lot of disputes to what you're saying. If you're saying Let's that women go. gets paid less, a woman gets paid less doing the exact same job, as a business owner, why wouldn't you hire someone for a lesser amount? If you're $100 an hour, but there's a girl that uh, gets $70 an hour for doing the exact same job, yeah. As a business owner, why would you hire a guy that cost more to do the exact same job? Well, I think it happens more because with, yeah. the society says that the man's going to do a better job, <laughs> so they hire the man. Yeah. yeah, I think that's more the expectation. Which, in some cases, I don't know. Maybe I think it's just. But if you're a business, think about it as a yeah. business owner. Are you saying if a girl, as like Riley's your editor? Yeah. If a girl is willing to work 70 cents on the dollar that Riley is, you're telling me you wouldn't hire a girl if she does the exact same job? I mean, I did hire a what girl business? over Riley. <laughs> I hired a girl to manage my social media over Riley because she was just, no offense, just better than he was at it. Like, let's That's be fair. real. Let's be real. That's but I'm fair. still paying him, but paying her way less than him because she's a woman, obviously. Because <laughs> well, I can get away with it. It's almost like... I don't know. I think this is like so removed from the gender because it's more about the quality of work somebody provides. But I I see it. It's statistically just a thing. But I think it stems more from the fact that men usually tend to occupy those position, those higher positions, right? Like managers is usually men. They might also be has might have to do with the fact that women often choose a family over their career, right? So that creates Correct. this imbalance. Um, but there's definitely statistics that like, you know, women in the same position, like you take a field, not one company, but like a field generally where women are just paid less. Those, I think that's definitely. Those statistics are highly disputed online. Okay. And it's a very, that's a liberal talking point that there's a lot of holes you I can love poke it. in that. I love that we have uh, I mean, on the podcast. <laughs> it depends what industry you're talking about. Are you talking about modeling? No, that's what I'm saying. There's a few industries where definitely women are. You know? And I happen to be in all of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I made the wrong career. Like when it comes to using my... Just like, uh, what's it called? Using the, the patriarchy we live in to my advantage as a cis white male. I was not going to say straight because that's questionable also. I'm in the wrong <laughs> career field. I should have mm-hmm. fucking gotten a job in management and business instead of doing like modeling and stuff like that. Because that definitely, I, in modeling is definitely true that I've had jobs. I did the exact same job as a woman and the woman got paid more than me. Same job. And why is that though? Well, I think because they make more money. But I'm saying, why are women paid more? Are you saying that they just hand women more money, or is there a reason to it? No, because they make more money. It's because it's they more make, valuable. Yeah, they make the company more money. Exactly. And yeah. women are much more into fashion than guys. So in exactly. general, I don't think markets work like that. I think that's sort of an artificial view on markets, that it's you just pay men more. Doesn't make sense to me as a business owner. Sure, I think now we're approaching time where it's shifting. I see the same argument with the Marvel movies. So that there was this whole argument about um, Scarlett the hot Scarlett Johansson, right? Scarlett Johansson was like in Black Widow, and she made even though she's starring in these movies, she still makes way less money than like 
The Rock or other Marvel stars like Chris Hemsworth or something like that. Which I get because she's like the best paid female actress and she's still only number eight or something like mm. that. Don't check me this, whatever. And I get it because true, same with women's basketball. She does not have enough pull. She doesn't have the same pull that The Rock Johnson has because right. he's a guy, right? So I think that's hard to compare those, right? Because the value they provide is like regardless, it's like separate from, from the gender. But I think if you look back in time, back when like sure. the rights were still like, there was a huge difference. You can vote as a woman, all this stuff. Back then there was definitely a difference. But I think now you're right. I think now often we look at those stats and they're definitely, it doesn't have to do with the gender necessarily. It's just with, yeah, I mean, what they say money. women in their 20s in Los Angeles make more than men in their 20s. But mm. generally, once you get to but childbirth, that's because it's a different story. Bro, that's like LA is a tough a tough. LA's one a tough, you eat. can, because all these 20-year-olds in LA, they do OnlyFans and they're pulling like half a million a month on OnlyFans, so they fucking ruin the stats for everybody. <laughs> like, what are you going to do about that? You can't compare this to like some guy fresh out of college working <laughs> at like a law firm, or you know? Yeah. What do you think, Riley? Do you think... Uh, because I love this. I love this podcast, because guys, because always whatever we do, we have me. I'm like, I see both sides. Then Jeff goes hard right and Riley goes super <laughs> liberal. I love it. I love it. It's great. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not well versed enough in the statistics to same to really make. Uh, an arg I can just go off of like what my gut feeling is where it's like I, f I can say gut feeling wise, if the statistics are showing that women are making less money. Uh, for the position i could see how the general male business owner is g uh, generally a pretty like macho straight white yeah, like yeah, yeah. what there's stereotypes around what a general business owner looks like mm -hmm. and i could see those types of men being people who are just like the kind of people who want men around them on their leadership team sure, I can so see they that. hire I men can see that, yeah. which is why they're making more money yeah but like again i don't know the statistics well enough to be yeah able to like back that up and yeah. not always because not a lot of straight men only like to look at men in the office as a matter of fact they don't yeah so they hire secretaries <laughs> no, because they hire hot <laughs> secretaries that are like <laughs> which are making a lot less money than the, the, <laughs> the leadership men around them yeah. i think it's but, all a liberal agenda and the liberals are ruining the country. I'm going to end on this. <clears throat> also, right, I want to remind you to not forget. I'm a little hurt. Why are you here today? Right? The sexuality expert. You are the sexuality expert. That's right. That's right. All right. Cool. <laughs> cool. 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 Um, I want to talk about this real quick. I want to talk about this real quick. Last week we had... Um, so I have a TikTok account, right? And I want to talk about this real quick. So <clears throat> last week I uh, went into WeWork where I like edit my videos and stuff, right? So I walked in there and uh, multiple people have told me, Hey, Mario, I love your TikTok. I yeah. love the TikTok with the homophobic girl in Miami. That was so cool how you handle it. I was like, thank you. I appreciate that. It was not on TikTok. That was on YouTube, right? He goes like, no, no, I've seen it on your TikTok. It's blowing up right now. So I wonder. I was like, oh, they probably must have, they must have been high or something. You know, <laughs> I was like, fuck, it. it's whatever. It's LA. It's LA. <laughs> then I go to dinner with Travis Bryant and he goes, hey, man, I don't, I don't even follow you. By the way, Travis Bryant, what the fuck are you following me? <laughs> <clears throat> and he goes up to me, he's like, oh my God, that girl was so crazy, the homophobic girl on her TikTok, crazy, the comments and stuff on that. I was like, you mean on YouTube, right? And then I texted Riley. I was like, hey, Riley, have you seen a TikTok of me with this girl? So then Riley did some research. And I don't know how the fuck you found it, by the way. But he sends me this page called Yankbuck. Who the fuck's Yankbuck? Yankbuck. Yankbuck. What, first of all, what, what kind of name is that? I first? like that name. You like that name? Yankbuck? Okay, I hate it. You hate <laughs> it, right? Thank you, thank you. Be on my side, Jeff. You're right. I read it as Yankback. Yank back. Whatever, more, it sounds fun. He's German, though. He's German, though. Anyways, Yankback. this person has, for the per past seven months, been taking my YouTube videos, high-quality YouTube videos, entertaining, funny, inspiring, mm. provocative, thought-provoking. My videos. Just upload them on TikTok. On, like literally just a, a horizontal cut of those and they're pulling views brother more than my tiktoks do they're pulling like like 10x like 10 like <laughs> easy easy 10x like the last one he posted when i found out he posted tiktok with a homophobic girl 15 million views in one day never had that ever on my wow, channel 15 in one day shit. this other video has 20 million views now where i'm interviewing this guy and i'm like how can someone just steal my content from youtube post them on tiktok and just completely blow up on TikTok to the point, to the point where people 
when they recognized me on the street, they were like, oh, you're young buck. <laughs> I'm young buck now. What the fuck is happening? This is identity theft. You know, maybe at this point I talked right, maybe I should just change my name to young buck. <laughs> Because people know me more as Young Buck than Mario Adrian. The brand awareness around Young Buck is higher than around my actual name. We got to get you some billboards around oh here. Oh, my God. So do they have to clarify in the like in the description that they're not this person? TikTok generally doesn't care, I don't think. I mean, there have been scenarios where they w removed it. But, I mean, he's literally said to you, he's like, TikTok said I don't have to. Wow. Yeah, he actually got back to me. He's actually a fan of mine. He does like a lot of LGBTQ related TikToks that he just like, he did, he did some other videos that he just uploaded, right? So Jubilee videos or some other YouTube videos. Uh, but mine just blew up. And then he just has As been, they do. As they do, you know, and that like uh, made me rethink life. I was like, damn, that's that's crazy. I mean, good. I'm, I'm, on the one hand, I was happy that my TikToks can do so well. Mm -hmm. Like the social experiments I post on my main channel. But then I was like... First of all, Young Buck, wh what are you getting? Like, why are you doing? Like, I'm thinking like from their standpoint, like they're building a brand, but I'm not getting much from it because my name is not out there. They're not crediting me in any of the videos. So therefore, there's videos with 20 million views and people don't know who I am. They just see this Young Buck. So they associate my face. My face, I guess, gets recognized. Yeah. But I'm Young Buck. <laughs> so it doesn't, you know. Uh, but also, they're not making money. TikTok doesn't make money. You don't make money on TikTok. There's a creator fund, but like it pays Garbage. with nothing. Yeah, he's gonna start doing live battles. It's just gonna be a meme of you. <laughs> <laughs> make millions on that. Probably, man. Probably, man. Yeah, yeah. But you talk to him. Is it like? Uh, yeah, I talked to him. He was like, "Yo, I, I can credit." I was also, "Can you tag me in the older ones?" He was like, "No, on TikTok, you can't change the captions. You can't change. You can't edit like the TikTok captions." So I made a video. I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna expose guys." So I made a video on TikTok saying, "Hey, this guy's been stealing my content. Like this video and stuff like that." Put it on TikTok. Twenty thousand views. I was like, "I got him. I got him back. <laughs> <laughs> I, got him back. <laughs> I got him back." You know, twenty thousand out of the twenty million people that saw his video wow. watched my video. But hey, it's it is what it is. It is what it is. I just it is like on TikTok. It's a weird. It just seems like such a weird platform. There's not really any regulations because they're so fucking strict. Once I show a fucking one ball sack slips out in a speedo, video gets taken down. My TikTok yeah. account got deleted for wearing a speedo. Yeah, well. But then at the same time, somebody rips off my entire YouTube library. Oh, not a problem. I mean, take like if it's an A or B scenario, A you get no promotion or b you get this i'm not saying it's perfect yeah he he created a proof of concept will pivot adapt improvise overcome yeah but because uh, if you guys don't know is riley is currently managing my tiktok he's helping me like edit uh, some tiktoks i'm apparently like doing that. a terrible job and, uh, i think i'm gonna have to uh hire young buck <laughs> i have to hire i'm gonna young buck we're gonna fucking hire you know you know that'll over be, riley Hersey. He, that'll be fair in germany i think he's a fan from germany He's actually a fan of mine. So he's like, I love your content, but also I'm ripping off your entire YouTube library. The issue I have with it, the issue I have with it is that I was planning on posting the same videos on my TikTok, the same clips. And I posted one with this guy that I interviewed. That, by the way, it's going fucking viral right now on YouTube Shorts where I just guess this guy's sexuality. And the video is like, uh, got to, for me, it went viral. Like it went to like 700,000. And then he posted his a day before though. So his went viral. So it stopped mine. I don't know if that's true. I'm just like, I saw the numbers and his went to 20 million and mine is the same video. And it just, cause he posted his yeah. the day before mine. So like, I think, I don't know how the algorithm, nobody knows how the fucking TikTok algorithm works, but I just think if my content goes mega viral, right? Like 20 million views, it's hard to then post the same video as me. So it kind of hinders my potential for reach. So we've, we've come up with a new, a new system. Wow. Yeah, we've revamped. We've yeah, reworked. We're on the onto the next model of the Mario Adrian machine. That's it. That's it. Follow and, me on TikTok uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah, and all we can do is follow Mario Adrian's TikTok and blow it up. Blow it up. Blow it up, guys. That's that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. Also, did you guys did you guys see what do you guys think about that? Did you guys see the TikTok? Maybe we can play it here real quick. I'm trying to guess stranger sexuality. Can you say the word yes for me? Yes. Can you now say it with a double A in the middle? Don't say that shit, cause then he's gonna say you're gay. It's just for comedy. Very stupid. If you go to somebody else that actually is homosexual. I mean, maybe I'm European, cause in Europe people don't give a fuck about sexuality. They just live our life. Here, people look for a problem. Why do you think that is? I would love to beat the shit out of you. I have a girlfriend, right? But I've kissed guys before. Weird. Is it weird? That don't make no sense. Just wanna like, as a European, give a little bit of openness maybe to America, because I think it makes life more fun once you like distance yourself from the label. Are you gay or straight? European. Miami 
was intense. It seemed intense. And I even told you because I, I was editing that video, the YouTube video yeah. that that was from. And it was probably one of the harder ones I've edited because normally when I'm editing for your videos, the energy is so high, everything's yeah, positive, everything's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like I get into that sort of emotional state when I'm like editing as well. And that one like started, started with that girl. That was the, yeah. that was that was the first. So, yeah, so I went, guys, for some reference, I went out of Miami and I asked people, I guess people's sexuality. It's a format I do on my channel right now where I go up to people and go, hey, can I guess sexuality? If I had the wrong gates, you could slap me. And then I go like into some comedy and stuff and ask them questions like, hey, who's the quarterback, current quarterback of the LA Rims? Jerry Goff. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not well versed enough yet. <laughs> and then I go, you're 100% secretly gay, right? So I was playing this game with these people in Miami. The first person I walked up to, I just asked this guy, hey, can you say the word yes for me? And then I said, can you all say it with two A's in the middle, like yas? And then the girl was like, don't, don't say that shit. Then it's going to make you look gay. And I was like, yo. And the guy goes, that's fine. Yeah, the guy was cool with it. Yeah. It was a funny thing. But the energy there, I could feel like how it was just like a little more cl like closed off. Yeah. You know, like doing a lot of like acid and shit. I've been like more open to energies, right? So when I walk up to somebody in Berlin or in LA or in West Hollywood, like the gay community, it's such an openness. Whereas like when I go out in Miami, especially that part of the beach, South Beach, holy shit, people were like, a guy walks up to them, like especially a guy with like, someone had like a speed on and stuff. And they were like, what is, he? you know, they were kind of closed off by that yeah. idea. It's like the opposite of Jeff, like. <laughs> Look, look at Jeff. Look at how open he is. Very open. If I came up to you, Wide Jeff. Wide open. If I came up to you, Jeff, and I was like, Jeff Kasser. Yes. How much would I have to pay you to kiss me? What would you say? You can get this for free, brother. Prove it. <laughs> I was just kidding. My guy, my guy didn't put his, his mouth uh, where his mouth was. We're, we're live right now. We're <laughs> Everybody just saw you were bluffing. <laughs> Off camera is different. <laughs> Some people call you a hypocrite, Jeff. You know what I, I mean? mean? I would say put your worth where your mouth is right now. <laughs> I, I need a little intimacy in there. Just, what is that? I didn't know you were coming in for the real. Yeah. Can I leave you guys a little space? No, no. No? We like you in here. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's for OnlyFans. <laughs> You know what? I this is the first time I've seen Jeff uncomfortable. Like, right, right, <laughs> right. He, his mouth was open when he came in for that. Did you see that? He wasn't coming in for a packer. Holy uh, shit. Uh, no, <laughs> little warning. I was going to say, I think that girl freaking out like that is kind of an indication where society is at the moment. A little uptight, insecure. Yeah, clinch like bottle and shit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a little aggressive. Yeah. Like kind of seeing the darker side of things, like kind of. You know, jumping into like he's gonna make you look stupid. Like, well, relax, relax. Yeah, I love, I love when she asks you. She goes, she's the one who was like, oh, everybody's just like looking for all this stuff, and 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 sexuality is like a big thing here. And you're like, why do you think that is? And she goes, we're not getting into that. We're not doing this. We're like, not, we're not doing this. <laughs> you brought it. Up. <laughs> like, what do you mean yeah, we're not doing yeah. this? You're this doing this. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was editing that, that was the first thing that happened and it actually made it difficult to edit the rest of the video because I was like, yeah. yo, the energy, I was so mad. I was so mad watching it. It was making my blood boil editing it. Wow. And then I was just in a bad mood editing the rest of the video. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, I put you through that, Riley. I can just imagine miserably like fucking like, oh, I hate this. Well, I mean, you kind of know like, you know, as we've mentioned, I tend to lean on the left side of things and you know, the, like the things that kind of get me upset and a lot of it relies around like toxic masculinity or, or like yeah. homophobia. Coming or, from or a woman too. Things like that. <laughs> yeah. She was the most like, she was the most masculine woman. It, yeah. it, it was toxic masculinity, like what her, her stuff, like where it was coming from for yeah. sure. And yeah, it just made me very mad. And then it I, was I'm, difficult I'm to edit. I'm pretty sure, that. I'm pretty sure one of her exes like left her for a dude like so, something like it like where does this come yeah. from there is some projection <laughs> right sure. i feel like there must be something where like okay I, why is this so triggering for you right now you know yeah because especially as a girl like mike i mean i'm so glad that my girlfriend does not give a fuck you know yeah. like i'm out i'm out there fucking like wearing speedos and behaving in ways that are not stereotypically masculine oh yeah you and that other girl wouldn't last 
two oh, minutes. Oh my god! Can you imagine us dating? <laughs> She'd be like, what, "Is that what you're wearing? The sh- are you wearing? Are you wearing? Are you in these shorts right now? Is that what's happening? Is that what you're wearing right now?" Because she said too, she was like, "What did you say? I'd whip your ass, or want to beat you up, or something?" Yeah, she said, "I." She said, "I want to beat the shit out of you right now." Yeah, yeah. Damn. and then she smiled and goes, "But I won't." Holy sh- You should have said. But the funniest the part of this whole thing was when I was like, uh, "Give us something else. Give us trivia." I was like, "Fine, trivia." If you go to Amsterdam and you meet somebody from Amsterdam, what's their nationality? She's like, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like, you tell what, what can I talk about? What she goes, oh, you're about? just going to make me look stupid. Yeah, it's I like, was like, what are, you, what are you talking I'm about? I'm not making you look anything. You're, you're, you just <laughs> don't you, know bro. the It's answer. all you, sister. And that's why people often ask me, hey, Mario. And I get that com- I get that comment, right? People ask me, hey, Mario, why is so much of your content revolving around the gay community, right? Mm. That's the fucking reason, part of it, because I love it. I love the community. It's truly so much more inviting than anything else I've done. I've, we did the video, one of my favorite videos I've done on my main channel, which is like asking strangers to model with me, where we went up and we just asked strangers in West Hollywood to model for me with me for the new bromance calendar. Fucking love that video. That was so fun. It was so just open and people were chill about it, right? And I just don't find the same energy often in like stereotypically straight places mm. you know that's why i think yeah yeah and that's that's a lot of what it is too as somebody who edits your work and everything because i see the comments as well when people are like oh like mario why are you always like using using gay people in your content or why are you always yeah. like obsessed with us and it's like as somebody who edits and as somebody who makes a lot of decisions for a lot of the videos on what to not put in the videos yeah i cut a lot of things a lot of times the straight people that we go up to are boring. Yeah. They get no right. good answers. Literally. They have no personality. Yeah. Like, yeah. just generally speaking, like, when we go up to gay people in West Hollywood and everything like that, the energy is so much better. So sassy so, and, like, So sassy, fun. so fun, positive. Yeah, like, it's 100%, just... Yeah, 100%, 100%, yeah. It's just better content. Yeah. And, I don't know, that's... It, the openness is just, like... The people energy. don't get context of a lot of stuff in social media. You no, know what 100%, I mean? No, 100%. No, and I totally understand. I just totally understand that comment. I think it's valid. Um, because I, even the word gay means happy, right? So I feel I think it just like it's definitely you can see that in the videos, hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you know. And also, yeah, I, just, I mean, look yeah. at Jeff now compared to when he was straight. It's Fact, he's so glowing. much happier. He's so much happier. He loves his life now. He's so much happier. He's so much happier. <laughs> yeah, and that brings me the whole like gay thing is also. I mean, we talk about gay for pay and like you know gay, with Malik Delgadi, we just watched and stuff. There's also like a headline I read, which I want to talk about, which is uh, I'm gonna read it to you. The headline says. Harry Styles is being accused of queer baiting, right? Wow. Because um, because they say that Harry Styles embraces a lot of the. By the way, so many people come up to me and they tell me that I look like Harry Styles. It's like overwhelming. Right? I don't know what happened. I cut my hair or something. You know, the the, the earrings, the pearls, whatever. But they're saying that he embraces a lot of the typically gay LGBTQ culture, like the way he dresses. Mm without ever joining that community. So he's basically using that community to get attention and to like brand himself without ever, cause he never, he never talked about his sexuality. He's kinda in that way also a lot like myself where he never came out as straight. He never, he never talked about, he was like my sexuality, I'm, I don't like labels. That's what he always mm. said. And I can relate to that. So what do you guys think about that? Well, this is an allegation that's been thrown at you. Yeah. Quite a few times. For sure. Um, I don't know. You know, I was never the biggest biggest Harry Styles fan. I'm actually kind of <laughs> digging his music a little bit now. It's, yeah. it's grown on me. At Coachella, I was at Coachella, like, it was not the vibe. It was trash. I mean, I mean it was not a trash. good. It was a good exactly. set. Yeah, yeah. It was not the vibe I wanted to have at Coachella. Yeah, I mean, when I was there, he was on like five mollies and wanted just like to jump up it was like down psychedelic like rock. Yeah, it was just yeah. not <laughs> what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, as somebody who's not in the community, it's not easy for me to. You know, I can't define what is and what is not queer baiting um in my mind the difference is if you're not somebody who's claiming to be in the community yeah um then you know then obviously like your sort of role should be as an ally yeah so then it just like comes down to whether or not you're doing everything you can as an ally if you're <clears throat> dressing adopting certain parts of the culture or whatever clothes are always like questionable because like yeah who owns clothes if you're somebody who is in that position of obviously being an icon and bringing something to the table like femininity in this case and and non-traditional masculinity then i think 
you know, you should have not an obligation, but like you should try to use that to help. Yeah. You know what I mean? To help people. So like, sure. For example, obviously I dress in a way that isn't like <laughs> stereotypically masculine macho. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, I would say like if I blew up or whatever, I would definitely want to like give to the gay community because like there's a lot of parts of the gay community that I associate with being polyamorous. I've involved yeah. a lot of people who are queer, um, who are non-binary and all this stuff. And, and I use that a lot on social media. I, I talk a lot about yeah. those people sure. and Same, the struggles yeah. and like how I, as a whatever man who yeah. is not somebody who identifies as being in the LGBTQ should view these people yeah. or like change the way that my mindset is to help these people feel more comfortable. Yeah. And I don't know enough about Harry Styles to know if he's doing that and like, well, yeah. Like, I mean, people also argue that Harry Styles basically is also, he's going to act in a movie. I, I don't know the name of the movie. We can put it here. Uh, that's like a gay, it's a gay role, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. It's like from 1950s. It's a very gay character. And he's playing that role without ever. And there's always been these things about like straight actors playing gay roles, mm. right? It's always been a thing. Like we met this guy in West Hollywood on the street. It was like, oh, you can't do this. Like queer baiting. You can't as a straight guy use your straightness against the gays, right? However, I would argue, in what way is it damaging, though? If you are, a, if you stand for openness, right? Are these symbols, because times are changing, right? And these symbols, those things, like wearing the clothing, wearing the feminine clothing, it's not strictly reserved for gay people. And I think, if anything, by dressing that way, by opening up to that, by even doing these gay roles, it almost, as a straight guy, as a public figure, it almost... I feel like would inspire some straight guys that watch him and idolize him. And there's a lot of them to also be more open and less judgmental and even less homophobic in a way. So in a way, I think what he's doing is positive. That's what I'm feeling about my own content. I'm like, okay, I make po content where I'm like, okay, I've, I've kissed guys in my videos, right? I go up to stage on the street, do some pranks. Is that damaging? Because at the same time I'm opening up, Hey, it's not a big deal to kiss a guy, even as a straight dude, even if you don't identify as queer or gay. So, yeah, I, I see, wonder what the damage would be he's doing. I see what you're saying. I think in the exact scenario of like straight actors playing gay roles, the, the damage is that you're like taking away from like some like a right. gay person who is not. It's like how in the last podcast, Fabian mentioned that the needle is swinging where a lot more modeling gigs are going to people who are minorities. Yeah. And, sure. um, and you're even like counter argument was like yo like white guys have been getting <laughs> all the jobs yeah. for forever if it swings the other way like yeah, that's yeah. fine and i think that's kind of the argument is that there's not enough gay actors who are getting the roles that are like for mm, gay people I see, yeah. and so the damage is that you're not letting that needle swing the other way that yeah. it needs to to kind of equalize back out well yeah as as a straight act straight actor like i wouldn't take a gay role personally okay just to like you know what I mean? Because it would be like, yo, like try to get, let somebody else. Get. And this is an interesting. Well, that's this I is mean, an interesting comparison to draw. But as a white actor, I wouldn't play a black role, right? And right now, obviously, that's very like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very not okay to do, anyways. But imagine hypothetically in a situation yeah. where it were like yeah. you would be taking away from all these like other actors who wouldn't need yeah. to pretend to like well, be yeah. part of like, or whatever it is. If, okay, if the content and the, the role is clearly, for example, about the struggles as a black man, the struggles of a gay man, mm. then that having that portrayed by an actor that's not, mm. that is not part of that community, I can see how that's problematic. But at the same time, man, it's acting. It's it, Part of acting is getting into different roles. And there's also gay men playing straight characters like Barney right. Stinson from How I Met Your Mother, Neil Patrick Harris, mm. he's gay. Mm -hmm. He played the straightest dude in history which is Barney Stinson, you know, picking up all the girls. Yeah. So I think it's, I don't know. I, with the acting thing, I'm like, it's an art form. And as long as there's, it's not like there's no gay actors, you know, if they're all super unrepresented and stuff. But from that standpoint, I feel like it's an art form. It's a craft. It, unless it's like a really, like you said, like, I think that's the same point I have. Like if it's a really personal piece where it's like, okay, this is about slavery or something, right? Then I maybe. Would, yeah, I would say yeah. if it's a really personal piece or the opposite direction, if it's a very stereotyped, yeah. I think that should also go to a gay okay, actor. Yeah. Like if it's like, you know, super flamboyant, very over, like, <clears throat> yeah. because stereotypes can in their own way also be kind of harmful yeah. to like, you know, because there's some, like Jojo is yeah, yeah, constantly yeah. getting flack for 
you know, like gay people being like, oh, you're actually straight or whatever it is when, because <laughs> you're not that acting funny? like, Isn't that funny. Yeah. Cause you're not you're acting like a straight bro. Way. <laughs> Just and, come out of the gay closet. <laughs> right. And a lot of that again, circles back to movies, yeah. TV, media, the way things are portrayed and everything. So yeah. I could see if it's on either end of the spectrum for yeah. sure. It should like go to a gay actor, but if it's in the middle, then there's a yeah, lot more like yeah. gray area. I, yeah. I think though that that the, the mindset of correcting for historical injustices in the present time is kind of a dangerous mindset. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Canada, Trudeau, when he got into office, he immediately selected 50% of his cabinet members as female. Okay. Mm. So you're selecting your cabinet members based on genitalia mm. in order to correct for historical injustice. Yeah. Do you think society becomes better by that? Because to me, that's not a society I want to live in where they pick yeah. the cabinet members 50 based female? on if what they have the a vagina. Fuck? <laughs> and it was like, it was like 20 what world do we live in? <laughs> it was like 20% of the candidates were female or something. Yeah. I mean, uh, so it's dangerous, bro. And I think you're, you're, anything just swings the other way right now. And I think it's going to balance out somewhere in the middle. I think we swung this way. So it's going to swing back. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, swinging. in the short term, is it better to choose like based on gender orientation over like ability? Probably not. But like, who knows, maybe in the long term, him picking 50% female is going to like make it easier for it to be a more gender neutral position in the future. Maybe in the long run, it does better. Yeah. More girls some might go into politics. Just, some of these who things knows? are just symbolic too. Not really like, there's not any like short term benefits of that. Right. It's more of a symbol, you know, and yeah. So bottom line is, guys, media and movies are ruining the world and liberals are ruin the, ruining the fucking country. I'm still kidding, guys. I'm still kidding. Just kidding. Um, you can cut this if you want, but I got a message to all the agents in Los Angeles. Okay. Wow. You guys need to get off your fucking high horse. You need to drop your fucking ego. You're a dying breed. Nobody cares about you. Yeah, I'll take it. And there's been a scenario where someone hit me up recently and they want me to pull down some content. Two people did, though. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure they want me to pull out some content, some pretty innocent content. So what are we talking about specifically? Um, well, I don't want to name the names of the, the models. Yeah. But uh, it was like pranking my straight friend. Okay. So it was like TikTok videos. Exactly. Okay. And YouTube shorts. Yeah. And the models hit me up and I, they want me to pull them down. And I'm pretty sure it's because their agents are in their ear about doing content with us. Got you. And it's almost like, if you can't beat them, join them, I think is a better uh, mindset to, to be adopting at this point because there's got to be some huge ego. These people don't fucking care. Like, look, I've been in the industry probably longer than these agents. You don't care about the fucking 59, models. bro. 59. 59. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of frustrating and irritating because they don't care about the models. I mean, they're looking after themselves. They know their jobs are declining rapidly. True. A lot of traditional industries are, yeah. And it's just trash. So, like, you're not going to beat the digital world, okay? Get it out of your head. Nobody likes you to begin with. <laughs> There's, like, a handful of good fucking agents in the country. But you trying to fight this digital world is dumb. Mm. It's not going to work out for you. So go fuck yourself. That's all I had to say. Let's go, Sorry. Jeff. Let's go, Jeff. No, I, I respect that. I respect Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak your truth, Jeffy. Speak your truth. I, so I respect wow. it, yeah. Yeah, man. Sure. There's been some... I mean, it happened, it happened sometimes, right? Where we had some... We had a case with... Uh, when we shot the video with uh, mm. with Justin and like a couple of like male models, right? We did a calendar shoot and a bunch of like videos and stuff. And then after like agents were talking about it they were like oh these are not like real models they do social media and stuff and they do like this cheap content and stuff and and they dropped the f slur on they you. dropped the f slur oh, on us wow. yeah. yeah they 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 sexually labeled us which i'm i don't like guys i don't like i don't like it yeah so yeah. that happened and then i was like yo fuck it i don't know modeling is just such a like still it's like so many industries it's still stuck in that traditional way of thinking like you said I, mean, and there, I think there are some cases like I get it. Like in some cases, you might have a handful of guys that are maybe going for these really high end jobs and you're really particular about all the content you put out there. Yeah, the image and stuff. So you don't want any. Yeah, we're talking about such a small fraction. And uh, I just think it's bullshit. I, I really do. And like to like try to compete against the digital world or I think it really kind of stemmed from you. I think they like there was some jealousy involved with you or something. OK, uh, because I don't think I have a, a big enough. You know, I have this like fairly small YouTube account for them to be asking to pull down my content. 
like from four months ago that kid was yeah, asking, yeah. I was like what I'm like you're doing this for your fucking agents who are gonna drop you in a month mm. I don't know what do you think Riley liberal <laughs> left liberal, <laughs> liberal 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 hard take let's go I'm not saying there are no cases at all no for sure I mean if you no I mean I've yeah. also been somebody who um I mean I've never been represented by an agent and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I just don't jive with a lot of agencies and agents and like the way that they portray a lot of things it's like how um well, you know a lot of brands won't hire somebody who's got an only fans or whatever yeah but my take on it is like if a brand isn't going to hire me for having an only fans it's not a brand i want to work with anyways because it's yeah. not part of my like thing so in in the same way there's a lot of agencies that wouldn't work with me for whatever reasons whether it's the yeah. fact that i'm just below six feet not six feet yeah. whether it's because i'm small dick all that small stuff, dick you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> yeah then um i don't know i don't there's a lot of things about traditional agencies that don't fit within my set of values i guess and yeah. like i've seen how they treat a lot of models as like the product sure yeah, um, yeah i mean there's differences right and i think there's definitely a point to be made like if you do content that's like in any way controversial you don't want to associate them with that right if you're an actor and you're just like super clean you wouldn't want that actor to be on some weird tiktok because it's like not the image you want to portray you're going to keep them expensive and i get that but i think my point is these people agreed to do the content with you and they should have said it in the moment and not come up like four months later and be like oh actually you know so yeah, yeah. And don't you think the agents would uh if they actually cared about the models they would tell them to pursue many many ventures mm -hmm. and not just have this narrow oh 100 percent. yeah i do think it's interesting that like yeah, because I mean, the model obviously makes a, a conscious decision. They go like, I'm fine with my brand going in this direction. And then to four months later, have an agent be like in their ear about it and whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, actually, like I'm gonna. it is a little bit weird. And I get that agents want to protect their models. They want to protect their actors. They want to protect the, the image and everything like that. But maybe some of them are stuck in an older way of thinking of what like For their sure. image has to be For sure. versus like what yeah. it could be and also i don't know is that the fault of the agents is that the fault of the uh or is that the fault of the brands that they're trying to work with yeah because the brands still have a very like strict sure i think it's all gonna well. change though it's all changing already like social media has taken over every single industry like yeah. stand-up comedy you look at like all these comedians like andrew schultz doing a comedy special fully without hollywood without netflix he dropped netflix to publish it himself made four times the amount that netflix were paid it so I, I mean, even the like the same thing happens with like all like modeling and stuff. You see the value in that and just doing your own thing. And then these structures that are just like a little obsolete, I think. Even like some of the elevator boys, I mean, they've been partnered with like Dior, bigger, well-known, sure, high yeah. fashion brands. And like some of their TikToks are the exact same things that you do. Like, oh, they pretend to kiss or they do the audio where it's like two guys in a the room. They're going to kiss. Yeah, they gonna, yeah. Like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and like here they are working with Dior and like yeah, all that. Stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. like at what point? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just wanted to bend a little there. No, hey, so. but I'm glad you got that off your chest because otherwise Thank you're going to release in the bedroom later. We don't <laughs> well, want that. We don't want yeah, that yeah. to happen. We don't that's want that true. to happen. I yeah. mean, we, maybe we won't. Maybe we won't. Yeah, no, we would. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I feel a lot of tension between you guys. Like a lot of sexual tension. Yeah. I mean, I got rejected earlier, so yeah. I'm still a little hurt. Is that how you handle rejection in life? You just like <laughs> keep going like a little whimsical little weasel? What does that mean? Like <laughs> you just keep going like a little whimsical little weasel. <laughs> what does that mean? Just pushing rapey no. vibes to you. You just you just like you know if somebody Be there's an rapey. obstacle like you know, that, you know that you know that J.K. Rowling was rejected fourteen times. You know to J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, but she's being canceled right now. So. It, I don't fucking care. The story still holds truth that she's been she's been rejected by publishers sixteen. I don't know twenty five. 120 times <laughs> thousands of rejections and she still kept pushing until harry potter got published and it was the number one best-selling book in the fucking world i think after the mao the zedong bible that's like the, the most bible. published book in the world but yes, yes, yes. the point i'm trying to make is when you face rejection in life and rejection comes are you just gonna like accept it and walk away from your destiny or are you gonna fucking fight for it riley that's what i'm asking right now <laughs> mr rapey are you gonna fight for it I or what this is a this is a, a tougher decision when consent <laughs> factors you into do play. You do not have consent. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's as crystal clear as it gets. I mean, I We're can't. We're on camera. I can't. Oh, what if we did this? What if I, and I, it was just a peck? Okay. <laughs> wow, that was real. Did the camera see that? I don't think so. Okay. 
Because I've got an image to keep, my agent told me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Jeff, we're, Jeff, we're here for you. Okay? But you're the witness. It was on the lips. <laughs> it was on the lips, but bro, you fucking played me here. You fucking played me here. <laughs> You fucking no, played he me fucking here. fucking took action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a whimsical little weasel now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was much more affectionate. I like that. That was yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Came in, so came left dog right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I should be pretty today, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was, that's the, fucking <laughs> that was <laughs> the most awkward <laughs> thing I've ever seen. We get it. Yo. What the fuck was that? <laughs> also, Ryan, did you see video. that? Did you see that? With me, he's like, I'll do it anytime we of the day. Only because you, know you closed mean? your mouth. You went. You went. We, he and I have he already went. been there. We've, we've been there. This is fresh. We'd have to sell this. That's true. That's true. That's good point. Good point. Good oh, point. my God. Well, that shows you guys that I am just more desirable than Riley because... Um, Jeff did it without hesitation with me. Yeah. So Jeff, to tell you what's happening is because you've been fucking pranking us all the f every day, every video we come in, it's like, yo, let's prank somebody. Let's Jeff prank somebody. Prankster. That's true. Let's prank my poly friend. So I, I paid Riley to try to kiss you, and he failed miserably. Are you serious? I paid him to kiss you. Yes. You son of a I bitch. Paid. What are you talking about? You son of a bitch. Well, how much did you offer him? One hundred sixty-nine dollars. <laughs> and you. Ruined my <laughs> wallet. <laughs> but comment below what do you think about the all the controversial topics? Do you think Harry Styles gay baiting? Do you think that Jeff is actually straight? What do you guys think? Also, guys, uh, check out marioagents.com slash comedy. I'm doing shows in New York, Colorado, LA. So go check those out and see me live in person. We can also meet up after and make out in the back alley or I'll give you a blowjob on Vine Street. Amazing. SeymourRiley.com and maybe I'll kiss Jeff there. Count, <laughs> count me in. Anything you want to plug, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>